always have a sense of hope because if you lose that, you lose all. Isa Ibrahim has been coming to the museum for many years. He is a big force in the museum. He is a good singer, a poet, an artist, you name it. He is. He is a gifted, gifted person. The way he draws, paints, he can do whatever he wants to as an artist. He is a so-called CPL patient, meaning a criminal process law. He's at Creedmoor because of the courts. And when he's ready to go, is up to the courts, really. So everybody is basically not able to make real decisions over his fate. His work is connected to Dante's Inferno. You know, one of the circles in hell is that of limbo. And that is his situation. For two years of my life, I was, I was a marijuana addict. I'm not an addict anymore, and that's good. I don't want to give too much away. I've broken the major commandments, you know? Uh, there are people who go through alcoholic blackouts or whatever, or psychoses, you know, or whatever. And it could happen to anybody, really. And that's, that's, it happened to me. It's been seven years, uh, but for some people, you know, that's just a drop in the bucket, you know? They, 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 they probably feel like, well, you were, you were looking at 25 to life, so what, seven years, you know? I've been to, to jail for a short period, and then they sent me upstate to a hospital for the criminally insane. I first came in as a paranoid schizophrenic, and then it became drug-induced psychosis, which I think is closest to the truth. At that time in my life, I was no different from people in the past who would walk around with sandwich boards, you know, saying, the end is near, you know? I think it kind of kicked down a door that can't be repaired, you know, but with medication. And not even that much. It, everything is really fine, you know? When I first came to the museum, as, as great as it was, I immediately noticed that it had a strong European flavor. Bolick finally said, well, you know, why don't you have your own room and see, see what you can come up with. So I decided on something that's very personal to me, which is the African-American uh, experience. I'm a huge, huge history buff. Really, without history, you'd have no idea where you are, and you have absolutely no idea where you're going. I've got my own history now to have to deal with, my own personal struggle with mental illness and with addiction. And it's very important for me to remember it and learn from it. A lot of stuff uh, that I have around here is stuff that's in a traveling exhibit up and down the state. Started out with a grant that I got and blossomed from there. This, this section of drawings here was uh, from a part of the show that was called The Horrors of Mental Illness. And uh, these are perhaps the only paintings that I have that uh, I did while I was going through a, a decompensation. And it's uh, paranoia, uh, psychosis, and depression. I felt the need to create and get out what I was feeling based on what was happening at that time. And uh, that's what came out. A decompensation, I guess for me, I, I felt like I, I was stripped. So I started just throwing away my possessions. You know, I threw away my clothes and uh, ripped up like $300 that I had, which then showed them what I'm like when I'm not medicated and possibly psychotic. The only thing that's helped me of all my life, and that's helped me survive this ordeal, was my artwork. There are themes that come out that I think are good things. Strength, will, hope, and some pretty ugly emotions too. Fear that I think needs to be seen. The flag series I'm doing takes flags that may spark a sense of recognition and overlay that with something truer to how the country might have been founded, be it tyranny or slavery.
for me, uh, painting or whatever it is that I end up doing ends up being some sort of a catharsis. You know? It allows me to then get weeks or a couple of days worth of feelings and wash it off my back and put it on a canvas to release it. It's very strange to kind of be in one place and uh, feel your work out from that one place. When the artist statements I write, it generates interest. It's bittersweet, but it lays the foundation for things that I'm going to do when I get out. This is no place to be satisfied or content. Uh, I'm in a mental hospital, I'm in a crazy house, you know? Uh, institutionalization, I'm surrounded by it. Where's the rest of my group here? Didn't I have more groups? Everybody is a little afraid of change. Uh, do you think one, Glenn really wants to be discharged? It's not what he thinks, it's what y'all think. No, do you think Glenn wants to be discharged? I think he don't. Why won't I want to stay here? Now, how can we help Why Glenn? Why won't I want to stay comfortable here? How can we help Glenn? Because you're comfortable here. Are place. you comfortable here? No. You found a place that you think that the guys will treat you as their brother. You yeah. think so? Yeah. You think I think they treat me as my brother? Yeah. This, you're crazy, This man. is like... Oh, 18 years of your life coming in and out of a mental hospital. You but yeah. something's wrong with you. Crazy. I came back. I got restricted. I've been well behaved. That's the problem. So what do you This want? has happened lots of times. If you can't get out of this situation and negotiate this situation, you can't negotiate any other situation. This is like ground zero. He's an optimist. There are people who, in the time that I've spent in, have come and gone and come again and gone again. I don't want to end up like that. With all due respect, it'll destroy you if you let it. I do what I want. I just have a tremendous amount of hope, you know. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, no one can punish me more than myself. Whenever I feel like, damn, this is taking too long, there'll always be that good little guy inside of me that says, just wait a while, as long as it takes. You know?